Hi, everyone. Welcome to your latest Carson's Take 5 with Ryan and Sonu. Sonu, we've got some news out of China. Uh, Stocks soar. That's why this week we are going to talk about that. So this week's title is Why Stocks in China Soared. So before we go there, let's just talk gently and bri- well, briefly about the United States stock market. We've come on with everyone all year, every week, all year, saying this is a bull market and the economy is going to avoid a recession. Just put some context around this. The S&P 500, so the stock market in the United States, up over 20% heading into the month of October. That is, Sonu, the best start to a year since, drum roll please, 1997. This is on the heels of... Yeah of last year gaining ballpark 24, 25% for the S&P 500. So we're looking at back-to-back 20% gains. Year's not over. We get it. But potentially back-to-back 20% gains for the first time since the mid to late 90s. Obviously, we call this Take 5 for a reason. We only have five minutes, so we have a lot to talk about. Why is this happening, Sonu? Uh, momentum is good. So as you said, last year we, came, we had a big year, 20%. Mm-hmm. And it's not like it's been rare. I think looking back at some of the work you've done as well, like – uh, consecutive years of 20% plus growth are kind of rare. Yeah. But the other side of it is profits are growing, right? The economy is in fairly good shape. The Fed is cutting rates as well. And so that these are all tailwinds for the stock market. I think that's essentially why we're seeing returns as strong as they are. Yeah, just a couple more things on this. Fourth quarter is the strongest quarter historically. Uh, when you look at things, fourth quarter of an election year, October is sometimes a little dicey, but November, December tend to be quite strong. Um, last one here is interesting. So the SP 500 is higher eight of the first nine months this year. Only April, which is usually a pretty strong month, actually was lower. The fourth quarter actually is a lot better, Sony, when you're up eight out of nine months going into it. When I took a look, um, you know, the, what we had, we, we had the fourth quarter returns up over 6% on average and higher eight out of eight times. So, like, never lower, okay, when you're higher eight out of nine months coming into that last quarter. You could argue maybe a relatively small sample size, but I'd still rather know than not know. So, we still think this is a bull market. We are aware. We talked last week about why we could have some volatility in October. That's very possible, um, but that's where we are with the U.S. Let's just stop right there and go forward because the real big news that's taken yep. place from an investment's point of view or stock market's point of view is the action in China. They just released some news to get their stagnant economy going, and let's just say this. The stock market in China loved it as the Chinese stock market gained almost like 25% in five days, one of the largest, at least yep. going back well over 20 years, largest five-day rallies ever. Why did the Chinese stock market just do that, Sony? And just on Monday, this is September 30th, yep. uh, Monday of this week, the index, the Chinese CSI 300 index, the main mainland China index, up about 8.5%, right? highest level since August 2023. Yeah. I do want to put some perspective around this. So if you go back over the last, back to the end of December 2019, right, through the end of the third quarter, September 30th, uh, the Chinese stock market, the CSI 300, as I just said, is up a total of 10%. The S&P 500 is up 92%. So it's Mm. been really lagging, right? It's been lagging for a long time, including over the last decade. Well, what's happened? Well, the economy is in trouble, right? Real Mm. GDP growth has been clocking in below 5%. Before the pandemic, it was about 6.5% annualized Mm. growth, right? And even that, this was 2016 and 2019. And that was also a slowdown from what they saw in the big first part of the 2010s, which is about 7.5% growth. So... I think this is an acknowledgement. Like we talk about panic cuts by the Fed. Is this a panic cut? Is it not? You and I have discussed that, you know, the Fed going big, you know, in the September meeting was not a panic cut. It was normalization. What the Chinese authorities have done, I would put firmly in the camp of this is a panic cut, right? And it's not just one cut. They're doing a slew of measures. They're cutting policy rates. They're cutting interest rates on existing mortgages. They're lowering reserve requirements for banks, which just makes it easier for banks to lend. They're even giving money, about $70 billion, U.S. dollar equivalent, to boost the stock market. These are basically loans to funds, brokers, insurers to buy Chinese stocks. Hey, guess what? If you give them money, the stock market will go up. So, And there's apparently more stimulus coming, right? The thing is, with China, the question, I don't think it's been borrowing that's the problem right? They have a lot of debt already. The Chinese non-financial sector as a percentage of GDP, that debt level is above 200%. It's about 205% 
right? In the US comparable is about 150% and it's going down in China, it's going up. So China's problem is not that, oh, borrowing is too hard and we need to make it cheaper. We need to make it easier to lend money, right? They already have a lot of debt and they're growing slower, which means their return on investments is pretty poor, right? What they need is fiscal stimulus, essentially the equivalent of checks, more you know, support for households. Consumption has basically dropped off a cliff, which is why the economy is growing well below trend. And I think they made some noise related to fiscal stimulus, but we'll see, right? The details are extremely vague, but markets like what they heard so far. And I would say what markets like what they heard as opposed to what they saw. So we'll see what will come down the pipeline. Oh, great stuff. Great stuff there. I mean, just to put some context around this, just a couple weeks ago, the Chinese stock market was hitting a 52-week low. Within two weeks, it went from a 52-week low to a 52-week high. I mean, that that is something that's extremely rare to see, especially in a stock market the size of the Chinese stock market. So it's clearly something we're watching closely. Overall, we've been a little more skeptical of China, been a little more skeptical of emerging markets. We're digging in a little bit exactly what all of this means right now. But I will just say this, China saw a huge rally in the springtime, like March, April or so, yeah. and then kind of rolled right back over. So again, these fundamental problems are still there. We'll see if this can change it, but the reality is uh, one of the largest stock markets in the world, which was one of the weaker performers, just had a historic, historic move. This is a bull market for a reason. We are seeing participation across the globe. The German DAX, I don't even talk about Germany that much, but that's hitting all-time highs. I think the German DAX is probably one of the top two or three most important stock markets out there. Now we've got some of the laggards participating. Everybody, this is a global bull market. I think that's something that should make a lot of investors happy. With all of that, this was the latest Carson's Take 5, talking about the Chinese stock market which has had a heck of a rally lately we'll see everybody next week thank you take care